the goodness of the Lord. <sighs> I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days have been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, and I will sing of the goodness of God. In all my life you have been faithful. In all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have held me through the fire in darkest nights. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. In all my life you have been faithful. In all my life you have been so, so good. Oh yeah, with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Rachel Gayla Kisa. This here reminds me like when I was young, you know, haha. <laughs> yeah, in Africa, you know, I used to they used to do this kind of hair for us. Eh? So why today I wanted to show my head is like I've been sharing my story, like the like the painful story, and I was told people that I was given a venomous uh drink, like it was a poisonous drink, and I didn't know it affected um it it took hold of it affected my my brain, my thinking, my memory um uh, my my um you know like i tell people that it was hard for me to remember street names like if i was at say andrew street yesterday if you ask me today i'll be like i i cannot remember so my mom my memory was tampered with my sleep pattern was tampered with uh my blood was tampered with because uh my blood i i got a very bad blood disease actually yeah maybe some people say anemia but it was worse than that. I, I, my skin became black, like really, really dark. And I used to itch all the time, you know, like as if, you know, all the time I would be itching. And all this hair was off. I didn't have no hair on my head. So I had to be wearing wigs. I had no smile. I had no emotions. Um, you know, I was at the verge of death. And on top of that, I, um, I had left my children in Uganda and man, I was a single mom, so you can imagine. Uh, besides that, of course, it wasn't easy for me. I spent four years sick in America. I could not go to work. I can give people, um, you know, certain scenes that happened to me. That's why I love this movie. Guys, my movie is going to come out very soon. Amen. So just, just, just keep watching um, the untold story of Kisa. But the thing is this, there's one man who is greater than anybody, and his name is Jesus. For me, there's a time I was like, maybe Jesus loves some people. I even there's a time I said, but Jesus is a racist. I said it one time. Because I was like, maybe he's a racist. Maybe for us, he doesn't hear us with the black people. Because I'm not the only one who's been suffering like, you know, people suffer in Africa. There are so many people that are praying right now. In Africa, if you go there, people have gone to prayer mountains to pray. People are seeking God, they are praying. But you know, 
there's too much pain like where I come from. I come from Uganda. And for me, I was going to get killed. And I'm going to tell people, I usually say it, oh, because of this person, because of this person, or because this person. You know what? It's Satan. The Bible says that the devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. But I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So the only person who kills us is Satan. He tries to kill everything concerning people. But there is a man called Jesus. Even as a young child, the Lord is with you to help you and fight for you. But besides, how are you working with God? Because most of the problems I got, me as a child of God, I got those problems, number one, because there was a lot of fear around me. I, 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 I've been mentioning to you most of the time that um, people that are following me, people that follow my channel, I've been telling you that, um, man, we were kicked out of my father's house and yet my dad was a rich man. Um, he was a reverend and then me and my mom and my sisters were kicked out and then we started another life which was very difficult, poverty, lack of food, lack of school fees. And then we as girl children, I mean, you, you, you had to find means of survival. Um, me, I got married young. At the age of 17, I, at the age of 19, I was married. I was married. And, but I knew Jesus. So because there was fear for what are we going to eat, where are we, what are we going to do, we also needed a good life, um, you know, for me. I just, you know, I got married young and I'm not saying I found my husband in Christ who were in the world going to clubs and things like that. And that's the way I got into this relationship, which became later on, became very bitter. And um, it was difficult. The husband I got married to would tie me with ropes and sometimes would sleep with a knife under the pillow. And I'm like, why? He was not the one doing those things. Now I've grown up to understand. It was Satan. Anyway, I ran out of that marriage and, I mean, things didn't just work out like that. I got a job, but after all, again, things began to change. I tried another relationship that became so toxic and I also almost lost my life. And on top of that, there are so many false prophets in Uganda. There are so many fake churches and me and my family went to a, a, a church of a false prophet and it was bad news anyway. I, I lost um, a relative. I lost my sister there who was, who was told not to take HIV medicine and she died. I mean, the story is very sad. But the most important thing is there is a man who is truth and his name is Jesus. So um, I'm here to tell people that do not take the word of Jesus for granted. Don't take the gospel truth for granted. And um, never be a, you know, when you live in fear, you're like, ah. like sometimes, like for me, I was being in America four years sick. I could not work. Sometimes I would go to work and ambulances would come to get me from work. Sometimes I'm sleeping in someone's living room and I'm so fearful. I cannot even eat or sleep because I was being tormented by the enemy spiritually and physically and mentally. Uh, and so ambulances would come to pick me up and take me to hospital. But I remember whenever they took me to hospital, I remember I went to Newton, Newton Wesley Hospital in 2014. I began to preach the gospel there. I preached the gospel and I saved souls. Can you imagine? Because on the inside of me, there is a man called Jesus and his name is Power and Life. And the, the Lord is so good because, you know, after everything I've gone through with my mom, with my sisters... You know, it's so tormenting. Like, I cannot even be able to describe what I went through. It's so bad. Guys, there's a man called Lucifer who is captivating so many believers. And the Lord had to teach me the word and how to resist him. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Right? At a certain point, I wasn't supposed to talk to my children, not, not even my mom. I was being stopped to share Jesus. Actually, the rich man that, um, there is a rich man that I tried to date and he said, oh, I'm going to marry you, blah, blah, blah. That rich man told me there is no God and Jesus is a mere man, you know. And, and you know what he said? He said, he's like, you, you, your, your Jesus is a mere man. He said, those pastors you go to, you all go to the same source. So I'm going to tell people this, that every time you're afraid of, say, 
you're, you look at your situation and you're like, I don't have money. You're either going to go to men, the world, or do things that you're not supposed to do. These days, I just learned recently, it's like six months ago, a young girl told me there is, uh, you know, you know, people go to church and, you know, there are, there are boys in church that the devil has placed in church to seduce other boys and try to sell them to rich men uh, for homosexuality and money in church. That's why I tell people, let's wake up as much as we are worshiping and we have nice voices and, you know, do this and this. The most important thing is the word and also you have to learn to resist the devil. And if you're a minister in church, I tell people, give yourself an hour. Church starts at 10. You'll be at church by 9 or 9.30. Begin to intercede for every soul and every body that the Lord is going to send to church. Because I have seen so many Christian, Christians and believers who are going to church and yet they are still bound by sexual immorality, homosexuality, and other things. Amen. I used to be a believer. I tried to be in Christ. But yet, even me, I was deceived at a certain point, And I went back to the world. People call it backsliding. But it's like somebody's not yet saved. So today, I would like to uh, ask you if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because for me, every problem I got, I found it in the world. But I'm going to tell people the day I decided to give my life to Christ to get baptized. Yes, the enemy was pounding on me. He tried to bring me down. But I was like, now I'm determined. I'm in Christ. Like no matter what people do, no matter what the enemy tries to do, I'm in Christ Jesus. So today, if you're a believer, you have no party with the world. You have no party with men. You have no party with the world. Let me tell you, even if I, there's a time I had, I got money. But what is money? Money and your life. I mean, you gotta choose life. The Lord gave us a way. You gotta choose. He says, choose life. Amen. He says, choose who do you wanna serve. So today, if you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please do it today. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Don't allow yourself to perish with the devil and his demons. Don't allow to perish with Jezebel and Lucifer. Come back to God. Leave those boys. Leave those men. Stand as a woman. Forget all those things. Remain in Christ. You're a precious vessel of honor. If you're a young woman, please, come back to Jesus. Come back to God. There's a place called the underworld or hell or Hades. People, come out. I'm begging you, come out. Don't say I go to church and yet you sleep with men. Don't you say you go to church and then you're still enjoying two beers and what? Don't say you go to church and you're still hateful. When the Lord was delivering me, he gave me uh, Galatians chapter 5. I'd gone to Celebration International Church, suffering with spirits, and yet I was still in the world. And the Lord told me in a still small voice, read Galatians chapter 5. And I didn't know had not known this scripture before, but the Lord made sure that he teaches me his truth. I saw the grace of God so that you people can repent. Amen. You're going to turn away. You can't be redeemed by the grace of God and by the anointing, but there is a word called choice and obedience. Let us obey God and obey the Lord so that we can be saved, even our children's children. The goodness of God leads people to repentance. God is so good. When you enter Christ, you feel it. <laughs> when you enter Christ, you feel it. You no longer walk like a, like as if you're so guilty, like you're in prison. Man, free yourself from prison, baby girl. Free yourself. This is a time of freeing ourselves, man. We got to know what to choose. We got to choose truth. So if you want to come to Jesus, let's do it together. Are you ready? All right. If you have your husband there, hold their hand. If you've been with that man, even hold that man's hand and say today, for me, I'm not staying with the devil. Tell him and say today we are going to part ways. I'll pray for you, pray for me, but no. No world, no sex, no sin, 
in me because I'm of Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, say, I repeat these words after me. Say, Lord, I thank you for this testimony. I repent. I separate myself from the world, alcoholism, pornography, homosexuality, witchcraft, voodoo, hate, spiritual murdering, other pro sins that I've been doing. I stop doing evil right now and say, Satan, let go of my soul, of my body, my children, my household, my family. Actually, I even kick you out of my city in my village or my school or my workplace. From today, I enter Christ and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I give you my spirit, my soul and my body. Give me your angels to watch over me and take control of my life. Help me, heal me, and bless me. Give me grace to share the gospel around the world. In Jesus' name, write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Erase it from the book of the dead. Today, I love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Once again, Miss Rachel Gela Kisa, I love you, I bless you. I bring greetings from Tyra Stendo and Chirabo. No one is greater than God. <clears throat> no one is greater than our Father. Amen. He lives and he reigns forever. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. Running after me. When my, when my what? When my eyes lay down, uh -huh. I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, running after me. I love you. So guys, I have my, uh, my testimony is going to come out. I've tried to share this story in many ways. You can go to This Is My Story, uh, Rachel Gela Kisa. Uh, you can call me if you also want to buy my music uh, at 978-991-7034. I've written so many books, my innermost being, um, for your own good. After this life is coming out, uh, out poverty, overcome the power of the world, wangula, um, nothing shall keep me down, man. From that day, I realized that the devil tried to deceive me to be a false prophet. I was like, ah, nothing is going to keep me down. Amen. To God be the glory for the things he has done. I love you once again, Rachel Gela Kisa. Keep loving, keep following, keep sharing. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever.